the problem with a lot of believers is a lot of believers suffer from what i call selective hearing selective hearing when they hear teachings they select what they want to hear and i don't blame them it is because of what they have been taught over the years their minds are messed up so even if they're intelligent academically they are dull spiritually because their spiritual intelligence has been taken away from them with dull teachings or teachings that don't make sense so they have become very dull so when they are reading they are not paying attention and jesus said these people are dull of hearing i like to read hebrews chapter 10 because a lot of people keep asking that question all the time hebrews chapter 10 verse 26 for if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth there remained no more sacrifice to sin the word knowledge doesn't mean you've accepted the truth it just means you have accepted the knowledge but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries now take note of the word adversaries an adversary is one who opposes the gospel the believer is not called an adversary an adversary is one whom the gospel has been presented to but he rejected the gospel so obviously that verse of scripture is not making reference to believers look at the next verse verse 28 he that despised moses lord died without mercy under two or three witnesses 29 of how much sorrow punishment suppose he shall he be thought worthy who had thrown underfoot the son of god and had counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified and unholy thing and had done despite unto the work of grace so that scripture is not referring to believers losing salvation it's referring to people whom the gospel is preached to and they rejected the gospel they are called adversaries and then somebody said to me about dr damina what about philippians chapter 2 verse number 12 walk out your salvation well put it up let's look at it wherefore my beloved as you have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling walk out not walk for we don't walk for salvation he says walk out now what is salvation ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god next verse not of works lest any man should boast you are saved by grace through faith not of works lest any man should boast it is the charis, the grace it is the grace of god that it, it is given without condition salvation is given without condition so that's why in philippians chapter 2 he now says work out your salvation not work for your salvation because salvation is the work of christ salvation is of god salvation is what christ has provided so he now says work out not work for work out your salvation with fear and trembling then it tells you how the salvation is worked out in the post text look at philippians again chapter 2 verse 12 and 13 let's read together in context wherefore my beloved as you have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling next verse for it is god which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure so he says you walk out your salvation with fear and trembling then he now tells you even the walking out it is god that is at work in you so salvation is god's work salvation is what christ has done it's not of works lest any man should boast and somebody says to me well dr damina what about romans chapter 6 which says shall we continue in sin well put it up for me what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound shall we continue in sin that grace may abound he didn't say shall we continue to sin now why did he say that look at romans where we are three verses before the end of chapter five for as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous next verse moreover the law entered that the offense might abound but where sin abounded 
grace did much more abound. Where sin abounded, God's cure for sin is grace. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Now pay attention. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? So he says where sin abounds, God's cure for sin is grace. Grace did much more abound. Why does grace cure sin? Romans chapter 6 verse 14 pay attention for sin shall not have dominion over you why for you are not under the law but under grace so a man under the law is under the dominion of sin a man under the law is under the dominion of sin but a man under grace, sin has no dominion over him. Why? Because Jesus is full of grace, which is truth. Now, so go back to verse 1 again. Shall we continue in sin, in, in sin, that grace may abound? Look at the answer. God forbid. The word God forbid means impossible. Impossible. God forbid that is it's not possible why how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein next verse know ye not that so many of us as we are baptized into Jesus Christ that's not water baptism that's salvation that is as many of us as receive Jesus Christ we are baptized into his death that is, don't you know that when you got born again, you died to sin, you are alive to God. Don't you know that when you got born again, you died to sin, you are alive to God. And then somebody said, but don't you know that the Bible says to be carnally minded is death. Don't you know that? Well, let's read it. Romans chapter 8 verse 6. Pay attention. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Next verse. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Next verse. So then, glory to God, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. The flesh in that context is not this body. The flesh there is a mindset. To be carnally minded fleshly minded so those whose mindsets they've not accepted the redemptive work of christ cannot please god now so he now says in verse 8 so then they that are in the flesh cannot please god next verse but you are not in the flesh but in the spirit the believer is not in the flesh the believer is born of the spirit that which is born of flesh is flesh that which is born of spirit is spirit you are not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be that the spirit of god dwell in you now if any man have not the spirit of christ he is none of his so once you're born of god you're born of the spirit you are not in the flesh so you cannot produce the works of the flesh you produce the fruit of the spirit because we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God before hath ordained that you walk therein. So the believer in Christ Jesus is eternally saved. It is called eternal life. It is called eternal salvation. It is called eternal sacrifice. What Jesus did for us was once and for all and eternal forever. Can somebody shout a powerful amen? Amen.